Hi, I'm Anna Denton-Jones of Refreshing Law Limited and today I want to look at the new Fitness for Work service that uh, is being introduced and rolled out across the country uh, at the beginning of 2015. It's supposed to be live everywhere from May and whilst there will be an online uh, presence and a service whereby, for example, GPs can telephone and speak to occupational health professionals, I want to focus on the um, referral system that's going to be in place for obtaining occupational health advice and looking first at the issue of referrals the suggestion is that GPs should refer anybody who's going to be off for at least four weeks so it may be that somebody is referred at that four week point it may be that somebody is referred before then because the GPs know that they are going to um, be off for that long but equally it may be that depending on the particular medical condition it's later than that so for example um, one of the examples that I've seen referred to is GP saying that they wouldn't ordinarily refer somebody who's had a hip operation until the six week point um, because that's what makes sense as far as recovery from that operation so the idea is that generally it will be the GPs that refer and obviously it is reliant then on whether or not the GPs do do that. But employers are also able to refer to this service. And it will be interesting to see how many do do that, and whether they do that quite swiftly or whether they're going to wait until somebody's been off for a long period of time before they try and use this avenue um, as, a, as, as a possible means to get somebody back to work. So, we've got the referral stage, we've then got the assessment stage and essentially somebody will be telephoned supposedly within two days of the referral being made with um, an, a formal assessment then being made within a five day period and that is going to be over the telephone in the majority of cases. Um, there is some provision being put in place for face-to-face -face meetings, but the emphasis is very much on that being in a minority of cases. So um, the employee is essentially going to be interviewed about their health position and what the barriers are to returning to work uh, over the telephone and query to what extent individuals are going to consent, first of all, all to that happening because this is still subject to the employee's consent uh, and whether or not they cooperate, which many of you may have concerns over, I certainly do. Um, and uh, will they really be willing to share with a stranger they've never met over the telephone? It remains to be, to be seen. But essentially, the purpose of that assessment is to look at what are those barriers to returning to work with a view to looking at how those can be eliminated. Now there is a suggestion that at that point the um, caseworker from the occupational, uh, who will be an occupational health professional from the fitness uh, to work service will contact the employer. That's highly likely in any scenario where the employee is saying that actually it's work that's the barrier to them getting back to work. So um, maybe some kind of dispute with a manager or a colleague um, or where the uh, occupational health professional feels they need to understand more about the work context to be able to make any recommendations. The idea is then that there will be a uh, a report or, or a return to work plan that's um, put in place. So replacing the GP's uh, fit note at this point. So this return to work plan will either say the person is fit to return to work or they're fit to return to work with certain recommendations and um, you'll be used to receiving fit notes with those sorts of things on already from GPs. So in that scenario where it's come from this service, there's no requirement to drive the employee back to the GP to get a separate uh, piece of paper. In terms of whether or not you accept what's in that return to work plan, um, it's very much down to you as to whether it's workable. Um, the classic scenario is um, the recommendation for light duties and the employer turning around to me and saying, well, we, we just don't have light duties that we can give 
somebody. So there may be a mismatch between what's being recommended there by the service and what you can actually offer or achieve. Um, but certainly the focus of this is very much about getting that person back to work as quickly as possible. What are the barriers? How can we remove them? What, what things can we put in place to make sure that happens? And this return to work plan will have a timetable a suggested period perhaps over which the duties would be phased back in um, and something that everyone can sort of work to and, and, and review really. In terms of um, follow-up, if somebody isn't currently ready to return to work then the service would follow up um, and look at whether they can perhaps do this at a later stage. Uh, there will be apparently some checking up as to whether the return to work um, plan is being followed um, and the difficulty that I can foresee are those complex cases, those cases where there is some kind of dispute in the workplace. The guidance is suggesting that this service will look at trying to facilitate between the parties but query to what extent they're really going to either be inclined to do that or have the resources to get anywhere near anything other than you know platitudes and scratching the surface really um the suggestion is that if there is some kind of barrier that's to do with the relationship that there will be signposting for example for the employee to things like mediation in terms of discharging somebody from the service um, once they've returned to work after a two-week period they would be discharged from the service and my concern then is what happens when perhaps the return to work plan doesn't go to plan somebody goes back off on the sick um, they're then not going to go through this service again because there's a, a rule that it's only once in a 12-month period uh, and the employer is then still stuck perhaps trying to um, resource their own occupational health advice. In terms of other concerns that have been raised, um, I've already mentioned the fact that the employee's got a consent to this. Um, I've mentioned the once in a 12 month uh, scenario. Query whether the GPs will refer this. There was a survey done of GPs um, asking them about uh, the, the likelihood of them using this. And it was very much a mixed bag. You know, some GPs were sort of 11% saying that likelihood others were much nearer the sort of 72 percent so um it, it will be patchy i think uh certainly to begin with um i've mentioned the over the phone issue and whether that is any replacement really for a face-to-face -face service and my concern really is how useful these reports will be uh, in terms of employers and getting somebody back into work. Um, in terms of things you need to think about doing at this stage, there's not been a lot of information or publicity around this. So I think in terms of communications with staff, your sickness absence procedures, those sorts of things, you might want to start referring to this in your paperwork so that somebody isn't surprised when it happens to them um, and that they know that, that this service exists. If you have any questions, please do email me. It's adenton at refreshinglawltd.co.uk. Thank you very much.